Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. I've had an absolute blast looking at the Halloween franchise this month, and that continues today as we start wrapping up The Shape of Fear. And I thought, what better way to do that than with a little trivia? So join me as we rank the top 10 facts that you may not know about the Halloween franchise on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Purely and simply evil. Like I said, I've had so much fun this month looking at Halloween and analyzing different aspects of it. I will be honest though, I wanted this episode to just be really relaxed. I thought we could just talk about some interesting little factoids about the franchise. Now, if you're a Halloween fanatic, you probably know most of these trivia pieces by now. But who knows? Maybe you'll learn something you didn't know. Also, this ranking is a bit different. I mentioned that this episode will be more relaxed, and what I mean by that is that I'm saving my favorite piece of information for last. Everything else is still ranked, but it's not set in stone. If I find something that I think is interesting, then sure, I'll say, yeah, I like that one a little better. If it's just something that's there, then okay, it might be a little lower on the list. But on that note, it's bell time, so grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring and carve this jack-o'-lantern. Starting us off at number 10 is going to be the fact that there was once a film considered that was to be a crossover between Halloween and Hellraiser. And what was that movie called? Well, it was called Halloween, of course. I mean... What else could it possibly be when you've got these two um, these two horror villains squaring off against each other? But what was the story supposed to be? Well, you see, this film would explain Michael killing his sister as a child by the fact that he solved the lament configuration and became evil as a result of that. Then later in life, Pinhead comes after him. They have their big battle. And that's the movie. Personally, I'm glad that this didn't really happen. I think horror crossovers are pretty cool, especially, you know, Freddy vs. Jason. That was the one that everybody wanted to see, and I think that movie's freaking awesome. But I don't think that would have worked as well with Michael Myers and Pinhead. For one, Pinhead is, you know, he's, he's pretty cool in the first few films in that franchise, but he's not even really the focal point of his franchise. And that... That's always kind of bothered me, I guess. I don't think Michael Myers needs to have that sort of storyline. I don't think it really works for his character. So yeah, there was once going to be a film that pitted Michael Myers against Pinhead. Coming in at number nine, Halloween 2018 was released on Michael Myers' birthday. So Michael Myers was born on October 19th, 1957. And this fact is actually confirmed in Halloween Resurrection. Look, that film's got a lot of issues, but it does give us Michael's birthday. So, there you go. There's that. And like I said, Halloween 2018 was released on October 19th, 2018, which I think is pretty cool. And also, when you do the math, that makes Michael 61 years old in that film. So, this dude's an old man. He is, He's an old man who is more brutal than ever in that trilogy, so... Do with that what you please. And here's a little bonus fact for you. The original film was actually released on my birthday, which is October 25th. So October 25th, 1978, Halloween was released. And several years later, I was born on that same day. So I think that's pretty cool. It's only fitting that Halloween is my favorite movie and favorite franchise because it was born on my birthday. And for our number eight entrant, Haddonfield is a real place. It really exists, but it's just not in Illinois like the film depicts. It's actually in New Jersey. And what is the significance of this town? Well, it's Deborah Hill's hometown. Deborah Hill, as us Halloween fans already know, she co-wrote the film with John Carpenter and helped produce it. A lot of her major contributions come in the fact that she wrote a lot of the dialogue, if not all of it, between the female characters in that original film. She actually modeled all of that dialogue off of how her and her friends spoke to each other when they were in high school 
to give it more realism. So I think that's a pretty cool little fact. Um, Deborah Hill deserves a lot more credit than she gets, I think. Um, everybody just, you know, hones in on John Carpenter, and for good reason. That's understandable. But Deborah Hill was just as important to the Halloween franchise and getting this iconic phenomenon started as he was. She contributed so many different things to the franchise, and she did a lot of work on it. So let's give her the credit that she deserves as well. Coming in at number seven is the fact that Michael Myers' name actually comes from the British distributor of Carpenter's previous film in 1977, which was Assault on Precinct 13. So yeah, John Carpenter wrote this character and he gave them this name as an homage to the man that helped him get his career launched, which I think is pretty cool. And like I said, this guy was, um, he was the head of Miracle Films at the time and they distributed Assault on Precinct 13, which really gave John Carpenter that footing he needed to really, really get his film career jump-started. So there's a lot of respect and appreciation shown by naming Michael Myers after him. I don't know how I would feel. I would be, I would be honored, actually. But it would also be kind of weird knowing that one of the most iconic slasher villains of all time is named after me. Somebody who's like me, who's a sicko, who's a freak probably would think that's the coolest thing in the world. Other people may not. I don't know. Some people may think it's weird to have all of this fanfare around your name. But to me, I just think it's freaking awesome. All right, number six. He's making his way back into yet another video. Dominique Othenin Gerard, a man that I have made it very well known that I don't really have a lot of respect for as a filmmaker, specifically when it comes to the Halloween franchise. But did you know how he actually got the job of directing Halloween 5? Well, he went in to meet Mustafa Akkad and was given the script for the film. He didn't like it. He threw it in a trash can right in front of everybody. So he insulted everybody in that room, told them that their script was trash, and then proceeded to lay out his own story of where he saw the, the everything going. And somehow it worked. I don't really understand why that worked. Maybe it was just because he was so bold. And that is a very bold move. I mean, that takes balls to do something like that in front of Mustafa Akkad and everybody who has worked tirelessly on this franchise. Personally, Again, I think it was a mistake to hire this man as director for the fifth film. I think a lot of the things that he chose to do in this film are insulting to the fans, to the story, to the character of Michael Myers, to the character of Jamie Lloyd, even to the character of Rachel Carruthers. Everything in this film doesn't really work for me. And when I say everything, I don't literally mean every little aspect of the film. I just mean a majority of the aspects of this movie I don't like. And I feel like I can never get away from this freaking dude. I'm sick of talking about him, but he just keeps weaseling his way back into my brain when I'm working on stuff like this. So hopefully after The Shape of Fear concludes at the end of the month that I don't have to think about him for a very long time. For our number five entrant we have this little fact. Halloween 4 was written in about 11 days. And when Alan B. McElroy was writing this film, he was on a very, very strict time crunch. You see, there was going to be a writer strike coming up and he had to finish the script before that writer strike began. And he did, but he only beat it by just a few hours, which is absolutely insane when you really think about it. So, the strike itself took place from March 7th to August 7th of 1988, and filming of Halloween 4 took place between April 11th and May 22nd. So this was a very, very condensed shoot. It was a very, very condensed uh, pre-production. Everything that went into this was condensed down to get it done as fast as possible, and that's because Mustafa Akkad was just hell-bent on getting this thing out there for the world to see. Now, you know how I feel about Halloween 4. I love the movie. I think it's one of the best in the franchise. I think I ranked it at number two. So I do love the movie, but it's absolutely insane that it was done in such a short time frame with that little amount of time used to prepare for it. Again, though, 
I love the movie, and I think that they did a lot of things right and got the franchise quote unquote back on track the way that they anticipated that they were going to do. All right, for number four, we have something that I feel like I kind of subconsciously knew, but I didn't really put it all together. So we all know that Janet Lee cameoed in Halloween H2O, and she is obviously Jamie Lee Curtis's mother, which is why that was such a special moment. But what I didn't really think about was the fact that she had been retired for so long before this movie was released. Nearly 20 years, actually. And I think that's pretty cool that she came out of retirement to do this with her daughter. And I know that it had to mean, it had to mean so much to both of them to be able to be on screen together, to share this, um, these scenes together and have those, that, that motherly connection. She even says in the film, if I could be maternal for a moment. And that's one of those things that when you hear that, you're just like, oh, that's, that's nice. It's it's nice to see. And I enjoy that. But I think it's interesting that she had been retired for so long and then came out to do this. And to be con to be quite honest with you, she hadn't lost a step. She still retained every bit of screen presence that she ever had. And of course, can't not mention the psycho car that she drives away in. And even those Bernard Herrmann uh, music cues that you get in that moment as well. It's It's very cool. And it's a very meta moment. It's definitely... As a result of Scream, all that meta is coming in. But nonetheless, I think it's a really cool moment, and it's something that I find interesting. Our number three, Entrant. So we all know the story of how the Michael Myers mask came to be. They got a William Shatner mask, and it was turned into the shape. But did you know that that whole process only took somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes to complete that transformation? I, I might have mentioned this in an earlier video, but I wanted to mention it again because I think it is absolutely astonishing that somebody who admittedly has no experience making masks was able to take this store-bought mask. And when I say store-bought, I mean they literally went to the store, picked up this mask, paid $1.98 for it, and transformed it into, to me, what is the most iconic image in horror history. Now, we all know that this transformation was done by Tommy Lee Wallace, who was the production designer for the film. But the thing is, everybody was doing multiple jobs during this shoot, and this was one of his. So, not only did he create the mask and transform it, he had 50 other things on his mind at the time. And it, and it really is just the result of not thinking, just doing, which I think makes it even more impressive to me because it was not a planned out thing that they were doing with this mask. It was, oh, shoot, we got to we got to get this mask. We got to, you know, make it look different so we can use it as our own. And it was just a da, 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 we got to get this done kind of thing. And it worked and it worked so damn well. And I cannot imagine any other mask ever being used in this franchise. Coming in at number two, Freddy Krueger was actually on set during the filming of the original Halloween. Yeah, that's right. Back when they were filming this, Robert England was still just a struggling actor living in LA. And he had a roommate at the time who convinced him to go down to Pasadena for the day. So him and his roommate, they worked on the set for one day, just one singular day. But what did they actually do when they were on set? Well, obviously Halloween was filmed in Pasadena, not Illinois, so it's not really the Midwest. So they had to create that vibe. So Robert England and his roommate were some of the people who were throwing the fake leaves around to give this film that Midwest autumn feel. And I think that that's freaking awesome. Just imagine what would come to pass in the next several years after this. Michael Myers becomes one of the biggest horror icons of all time. Freddy Krueger becomes an absolute media juggernaut, just invading everything and, and being so permeated throughout pop culture. It is, it's just amazing to think about how these two iconic things sort of crossed over, but never really did. And also, it's kind of cool to think about how that Elm Street house looks like it could fit somewhere in that same setting as Halloween and Haddonfield. Obviously, Springfield's in Ohio, Haddonfield's in Illinois, but those are 
pretty similar. They have pretty similar vibes when you get to that uh, suburban area. So I think it's pretty interesting there too. All right, our final entrant is my absolute favorite fact about Halloween ever. And that's for a few reasons. One, it's just cool. I love Halloween, but I also love professional wrestling. I'm a professional wrestler. I was trained by Cody Rhodes, QT Marshall, Glacier, and several other people as well. And this will always be the one thing that I think is just freaking amazing. And that's, like I said, never going to change. Obviously, in that first film, we get that shot of Lori thinking that she's killed Michael for like the second or third time. And so she's sitting in that doorway. He's laying in the background and he just sits up and it's absolutely phenomenal. I love the way that that scene is shot. It's terrifying when you really think about it. Do you know what that inspired or rather who that inspired? That's right. The Undertaker. The Undertaker got his sitting up from Michael Myers and other horror villains, but specifically Michael Myers. And this was confirmed by the dead man himself. And to be quite honest, I'm absolutely aggravated at myself that I didn't make this connection earlier in my life because I've always been a fan of The Undertaker. I've always been a fan of Halloween, and I don't know how I didn't see that when I was a lot younger. And again, I love when horror and wrestling crossover, and there is a lot of crossover there. I mean, Undertaker's kayfabe brother Kane was in a couple of horror movies, the See No Evil and its sequel. And, you know, there's a lot of wrestlers who do these little movies and things like that. There's, you know, you got things like Pro Wrestlers versus Zombies that has a plethora of them in it. Uh, one of my coaches, Glacier, has a horror sci-fi movie coming out, I think, November 1st called The Unbreakable Bunch, where he's got a bunch of other wrestlers with him. And I think that's freaking awesome. So there is a lot of crossover in those two mediums. And I, I absolutely love that. And that's the reason that I wanted to start this channel. So stuff like that is always going to be my favorite thing to look at. And again, I just, I just love the fact that Undertaker got his sit up from Michael Myers, from The Shape. And there's a lot of similarities between their two characters if you uh, really break them down. Maybe that's a video that we can do in the future. But there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite facts about the Halloween franchise. Did you learn anything today? Let me know down in the comments. And also, let me know any other interesting factoids that you know about the franchise. Maybe you'll teach me something. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I have a discount code that you can use to save 20% off of your entire order. So be sure to check that out. And you can also find all of my merchandise available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Andrew Dreamer or right under this video here on the channel. And I've also been reworking the WWH Patreon page, updating some things over there, adding some new perks. So be sure to check that out and consider joining us there as well. Or if you want, you can become a member right here on YouTube. Be sure to check all of those out. All of the links are in the description below. Don't forget to like this video and share the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. Now that we've talked about some of the facts about the Halloween franchise, what is my favorite timeline in the series? Luckily, you can find out by watching the video that's appearing on your screen right now. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.